The Indian Veda says, in the beginning nothing existed nor did not exist, neither the air nor the sky above. What was it that moved here and there? Where was it and where was it going? Under whose protection? What is it that fails the great abyss? There was neither death nor immortality. There was no day and no night. There was only the one breath, and there was nothing except or beyond the breath. The Bible says, and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And they said, go and let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach to the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad on the face of the earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man build. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. Let us go down and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. It seemed to me that all religions must have one common origin, one common source. Science denies such a notion. Science talks about the ignorance of primitive peoples and their rituals of idolatry. But can all the highest hopes and aspirations of humanity be traced back to the beliefs of primitive man? Is it possible that the great leaders, martyrs, and heroes of history fought and perished because they misunderstood the laws of the universe? Because they failed to see that all creeds have the same source? Gradually, I began to uncover the secret doctrine which is the basis of all spiritual teachings. But my understanding was far from complete. The study of the sacred texts of the East provided me with the key. Thanks to the isolation of the Himalayas, the coding of the ancient teachings and the lack of interest among Europeans in accepting and understanding the esoteric world, the secret doctrines were protected. Those secret teachings cannot be completely revealed. Part of them will always need to be safeguarded from those who are ignorant. But one thing is clear, ancient knowledge has fed the spiritual hunger of mankind through the ages. The similarities in religious doctrines point to a common origin, to a great brotherhood of teachers who guide our evolution.
They protect the truth so it won't be violated. But from time to time, when it has been necessary for the benefit of mankind, the truth has been revealed. These masters have served as the spiritual teachers and healers for our planet. Ancient legends, the ruins of temples and sacred sites give testimony to their existence. But all this is of no value to the unlearned and ignorant. The sacred books of the East are the best proof of the greatness of those masters who have devoted themselves to the benefit of mankind. These ancient texts contain knowledge about God, the universe, and man. They are all the same in their essence, although they are different in their form. They all point to a common origin, the ancient divine wisdom. The knowledge of divine wisdom, that is what we call theosophy. It is the foundation upon which all religions of the world are built. It is the nurturing spring that is the source of all of mankind's most heartfelt and noble aspirations. It is the wisdom that confirms our hopes for the future and brings us to our highest trust in God.